wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Remember the number that we ended with yesterday? It was 100 and 60 or 50? 50. 50. Yeah, 50. So we begin today with hadith number 151. 151. Narrated by أبي هريرة أن رجلا أتى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال أصابني الجهد يعني he said to the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم after he came to him I am starving فبعث إلى نسائه then the Prophet sent to his wives. فَقُلْنَا وَالَّذِي بَعَثَكَ الْحَقُّ بِالْحَقِّ مَا مَعْنَا إِلَّا الْمَاءِ We swear by the one who sent you by truth, we have nothing but water. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم مَنْ يَضُمُّ أَوْ يُضِيفُ هَذَا Who? He sent to his companions. Who can host this person? <coughs> so this person is the guest of who? Of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who can guest this person? May Allah grant him mercy. So when, when the Prophet say, may Allah grant him mercy, that means they should be taking care of this man. Just pray with me one second, please. That's why we say to the, to the pilgrims, we say they are the guests of Allah, Ar-Rahman. You know the word, the guests of Ar-Rahman, it implies all respects and generosity that should be granted to those people. They are not the guests of anyone. They are the guests of Ar-Rahman. Now there's a trouble here. Okay. Ya Allah. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one companion, he's Abu Talha. Abu Talha al-Ansari radiallahu anhu. He is, subhanallah, he was always generous. When he heard the, the verse revealing, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You will not attain Righteousness until you spend of what you love. You give what you love. Today we have cancer shops, many, many, many shops. When you enter inside, even the smell, you smell it, you don't like it. Because these clothes and things have been processed to be sold again. And guess what? Those people, they take it for free. And they sell it for low price. But they take it for free. So it's, it was not charity, number one. No, number two, it was not charity. But number one, they did not give what they love. They give, they give what they hate. Mm -hmm. They give what they did, are not interested in anymore. 
<laughs> Look what Abu Talha said. When he heard the verse, you will not attain righteousness until you spend from that you love. <coughs> My children are waiting for me to, to attend this as well. So if you bear with me one second. So when Abu Talha heard that, he said, O oh Rasulullah, I heard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to you such and such. And I have my garden, my park, which is mostly beloved to me. The Prophet used to be visiting that, uh, that park, and he used to drink from it, and he used to love to drink. Its water is smooth and cold. Its garden is full of fruits. The Prophet loved it. The Prophet loved it, alayhi salatu wasalam. So when Abu Talha heard this verse, he came to the Prophet saying to him, O Prophet of Allah, I heard Allah saying, you will not attain righteousness until you spend from what you love. And bear the will, the garden of Ha is the most beloved thing of one of my properties, of my proper, among my properties. And I make you witness that it is for the sake of Allah and His Messenger. Use it, O Prophet of Allah, for the way though that you like. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Bakhin, Bakhin. As you say in English, wow, wow. This is a money, a property that is very successful. Then the Prophet said, if you say that, I would suggest to you that you keep it for the poor people among your relatives. And Abu Talha did. Now here Abu Talha had done something. He has the he has the guest of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But he went to his wife, as the narration says. He said to his wife, "You should honor the guest of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Don't spare anything. لا تدخري شيئا." She said, I swear by Allah that we have nothing but a little provision of our children. So what do they have? They have nothing except little food for the children. But he is he's the guest of who? Of Rasulullah. We that means as if Abu Talha is saying, don't leave anything, even if it's for our children. Then he said, alayhi salatu wassalam, hayyi ta'amaki, prepare the food you have, wa aslihi sirajaki, and turn on your, huh? Your lamps. Wa nawwimi sibyanaki, and let your children sleep. Then she prepared her food, and turned on her lighter, the small lighter, and she made her children sleep. Then she stood up as if she is fixing her lighter. You know the... Lamps. Huh? Lamps. 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 Then she switched it, switched it off. Now, she started to make some actions with her husband. The husband doesn't see them clearly because the light is off. But he can see some actions as if they are eating while they're not eating. They have nothing to eat. They gave him the food of the children, but he was concerned. Do they have something? Then they had to pretend that they are eating something while they are hungry, and the children were hungry. <clears throat> so 
The guest ate, and those two hosts slept a night while they are hungry. By this kind of society, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled His promise to them, each one of them you can see generosity, kindness, righteousness. Each one of them, each one of them has a great character. Look how did, he, did the, the husband and the wife deal with the host of who? The host, the, ghost, uh, the guest of, of the Prophet Sallallahu <coughs> And when he came to the Prophet next day, Abu Talha, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لَقَدْ ضَحِكَ اللَّهِ Or, عَجِبَ اللَّهِ مِنْ فِعَالِكُمَا بِضَيْفِكُمَا اللَّيْلَةِ Allah laughed. Well, he wondered for what you have done with your guest this night. <coughs> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a verse regarding Abu Talha. They preferred others over themselves, even if they have a need and hunger and starving. And whoever is helped to be averted from stinginess, then those are the successful ones. What did Allah say here in this verse? وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ What if Allah said وَيُؤْثِرُونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ Isn't this a big difference? Some people claim that there was a fight between Abu Bakr and Ali. Abu Bakr wanted to be the leader and he took it from Ali because he wanted to be the leader. This is not a description of Ashab Rasulullah. Kadabu, Allah is saying here, they prefer others over themselves. Those people, they make you to, to they <coughs> make you to believe that they prefer themselves. But look at the difference here. They say they prefer themselves. Abu Bakr prefer himself. Omar prefers himself himself. But the verse, the Quran here is saying they prefer others over themselves. By this, we have finished their case. Their case, their case is finished. This is not what they, the testimony they give is opposite to the testimony Allah gave about the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. They are generous. They have given, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لِلْفُقَرَاءِ الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ ها وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانًا وَيَنْصُرُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ He's talking about the immigrants. Those poor people, fuqara, those immigrants, who have been driven out from their properties and their children. They seek what? Huh? They seek what? Fadlan? What is Fadlan in English? Hmm? A grace, a favor from Allah. And they support Allah and His Messenger. Now, let's ask you this question. The companions are of two categories, two types, right? Al Muhajirun and. The question is. Are the Muhajirun Ansar at the same time or not? Huh? Yes or no? Very good. Very good answer. Where is the evidence? وَيَنْصُرُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ Those are the truthful ones. So Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the Muhajireen, bearing witness by Himself subhanahu wa ta'ala that they are Ansar of Allah and His Messenger. Is that right? Mm -hmm. 
That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he addressed his talk to Muhajireen saying to them, if I die, you take care of the Ansar. Take care of them. That means when you become you Muhajireen, the leaders after me, you should take care of Al-Ansar. That's why when, when the Prophet died and Al-Ansar said, from you there is a leader and from us there is a leader. Then Abu Bakr said, we are Al-Umara wa antum al -wuzara. We are the leaders and you are the supporters, our ministers, this, the next one. Why? Some, some may say, that's not fair. No, it is fair. Because two things have been gathered in the Muhajireen. They are immigrants and they supported Allah and His Messenger. Did you understand that? Some people say, no, Al-Ansar are more important. No, that's not true. Al-Muhajirun are more important than Al-Ansar because they have double efforts that they did. They supported and they immigrated. So this is a good answer. To those who say, ah, somebody may be more important. Sa'ad uh, bin Mu'ad is more important. Why they said to Sa'ad bin Mu'ad, no. But they said to Abu Bakr, yes. They bring this. T today they became very technical people. I wish they were technical people regarding what improves this ummah. But they are technical and return us back always to the argument about who was the leader, who deserved to be the leader. That's their problem. So, <coughs> Abu Talha radiallahu anhu preferred this guest of Rasulullah. Why? When the man is not known. A man came. He has no value. I mean, he's a Muslim, yes. But and he's not a significant person like Ansar, Mahajirin. A normal person. But what made him significant to Abu Talha? He is the guest of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Look at those men, by those people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled his promise. Still, but he, why he doesn't fulfill his promise to us? Because we did not fulfill his command to us, to him. We did not fulfill his do's and don'ts. That's why he did not fulfill to us what he fulfilled to the Muhajireen and Al-Ansar. This should be a notice for us. Hadith number 155. The Prophet Sallallahu said, ليس شيء أطيع الله فيه أعجل ثوابا من صلة الرحم. There is nothing ever among the things that Allah is obeyed by more advanced in its reward than joining the kinship. What's your joining the kinship? Silat al Rahim. And we mentioned yesterday Silat al Rahim. <coughs> when uh, when uh, the day, the Mother's Day is, uh, will come? When? It passed already? Since how many months? Two weeks, maybe? No day for the father? No. Also? There's a day for the father. Mm. Good, good. But not good enough. Why? Because. Because. Uh, because the righteousness of the father and the mother should be every day. So we don't observe any celebration, <coughs> a day for the mother, a day for the father. Because the righteousness is every day, not only once in a year. The contrary, the contrary. When you remember your mother once in a year, and one, one day over the year you call her, Hey mom, how are you? Today is your mother. Today is your day, okay? Wait for the gift. The gift is, I sent you a gift, mom. It's on its way to you. The mother says, oh, my son, don't you remember me except on that day? 
Only one day in a year you show kindness to me? Hmm? See? And that's why we say to those who celebrate the birthday of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we say to them, no, we celebrate his sunnah every day. That's what the Prophet ordered us. He didn't order us to celebrate his birthday. But why didn't he? If there's something important the Prophet would have given us order to do or not? Good question, isn't it? If there's something important the Prophet would be telling us to do it, yes? If it's not important, the Prophet would have not been asking us to do it. So we say to those people who say, why don't you celebrate? We say, wait a minute. We celebrate his sunnah every day, a daily celebration. Everything the Prophet does, we do. There are many people who are so keen, serious to celebrate his birthday. Yet if you, if you check the way they pray, they don't Pray due to the sunnah of Rasulullah Their prayer doesn't match the prayer of Rasulullah Sallallahu Their attitude, their appearance doesn't match the appearance of Rasulullah And yet, they said, you must celebrate that day. The Prophet didn't celebrate it. Oh, by the way, the question, why he didn't? Okay, because he was alive? Okay, but after he died. Omar, why didn't he do it? Abu Bakr, why didn't he do it? Didn't they need to do it? Is it only important for us, but it was not important for them? A good question. Good question. So, there is nothing among the things that you obey and you'll be rewarded. The reward of all what Allah is being obeyed for will not be given, will not be rewarded in advance as the advanced reward of being kind to your father and mother. That means, that means, plus, plus to the reward in the hereafter, there is a reward here in this life. And the vice versa. If you were rude to your father and mother, wait a minute. The destiny of you is in the hand of Allah. After couples of years, you're gonna be a father or a mother, and you're going to be very happy of having a beautiful child, innocent child. When he or she become 14, 15, oh, very rude. Hmm. What shall I do? He says to his mom, uh, mom, his mom says to him, you should respect me. I was in a great agony after I delivered you, when I delivered you. No, you wanted to have fun. <laughs> Very rude. So, they don't know that this gift that Allah had given them, huh? Allah is saying to them, Yalla, deliver your punishment. It's on the way. <coughs> Yalla, you're happy? Take care of him. Put napkins, he's going to be your punishment. And yeah, that's true, brothers. As you mentioned to yesterday, the Prophet wasallam said, May the curse of Allah be on the one who swears at his father and his mother. And imagine a person swears at his father and mother or curses father and his mother. How rude is he or she? Hadith number 156. Anas said, Ja'a shaykhun yuridu nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An old man came seeking the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fa'abta'a al-qawmu anhu an yuwassi'u lahu. Then people didn't really uh, give him chance to come forward to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fa'qala al-nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Laysa minna. مَنْ لَمْ يَرْحَمْ صَغِيرَنَا وَيُوَقِّرْ كَبِيرَنَا He is not of us. The one who doesn't show mercy to our young ones and show hmm, uh, gratitude and respect. Respect. 
to those elders among us. Hadith 157 An Anas Narrated by Anas that the Prophet وسلم, saw a phlegm, a mucus, a phlegm, in the direction of the mosque. And it's sometimes people, and they, they stick it like this to the wall. That used to be happening. And there are many hadith narrations in Bukhari that the Prophet used to see that, and the Prophet used to uh, move it by his hand. And noting people that you shouldn't be doing that, you shouldn't be doing that, always. Many hadiths, subhanAllah, something like 20, 20 narrations. Then the Prophet, when he saw that uh, mucus or phlegm, he got angry until his face became red. Then one of the women of Al-Ansar came to it and she removed it. And she replaced it with perfume. As the Prophet saw it, he said, Ma ahsana hadha. How good is that? How good is that? Hadith number 158. An Abil Awar, an Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qal, Ma akhafu ala ummati illa thalathan. I fear nothing for my nation but three things. Shuhun muta'a. A followed and obeyed stinginess. That means shaitan whispers you to be stingy on something, not to give, then you obey your desire in this. Shuhun muta'a. Stinginess that is followed, obeyed. Wahawan muttaba' and desire following. A desire following. A person keeps following her desire, his desire, his desire to what is contrary to the obedience of Allah. Look, when you obey, when you are obliged to obey Allah, but you oblige yourself to obey what? Your desire. Who becomes your God? In another Two verses. Do you see one who takes his desire as his God? So three things. Followed stinginess and obeyed desire. And misleading leader. Misleading person, Imam. Many people, many people, they call them Imam, but they are misleading Imams. That's why, subhanAllah, the, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised the Prophet Ibrahim to make him Imam of guidance, and how great is that? If you, that's why it's important to learn, so that you become a leader of guidance. You know what's the meaning of leader of guidance? You die. You are in your grave, and great hasanat are being added to your credit of good works. Even if you are in your grave. The more people are benefited and teaching others and, and benefiting others, the more you'll get hasanat, hasanat. Wholesale hasanat. Wholesale hasanat. Hadith number 150. Uh, 159 the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said مَسْتَكْبَرَ مَنْ أَكَلَ مَعَهُ خَادِمُهُ He will not fall in arrogance the one who allow his maid or servant to eat with him وَرَكِبَ الْحِمَارَ بِالْأَسْوَاقِ and he rode the donkey in the market places why is that? mostly the Prophet used to be uh, riding the donkey or the camel in, the, in his travels. Subhanallah. He was not looking for the greatest and hugest, the most giant she-horse. No. 
always his baghla al qaswa his his she donkey alayhi salatu wassalam wa atqala al shaat fa halabaha so he would not be falling in arrogance the one who allows his servant to eat with him to ride the donkey in the marketplaces and to take the sheep and uh, milking it. Three things. Hadith 162. Aisha narrated. Uh, he used to when he when he hear, hears some some news about someone, he doesn't say what is the matter of, for example, Mr. Uh, Omar, what is the matter of Muav. He used to be saying, what is the matter of some people saying such and such, some people. Even that means even when you criticize someone, you don't need. There's no need to mention his name. You know, once I was asking someone about a person, I said to him, do you know this person, so-and-so? He said, yeah, may Allah forgive him. <laughs> and he, he was about to mention to me everything. He said, wait a minute, I just asked you if you know him or not. I didn't ask you what is his attitude, what is... People are ready to speak out and to back by their brothers because shaitan is so close to them. And they did not really comprehend the, Islam, the high standard of Islamic morality. Believe me, avoid backbiting your brother. Avoid it, for it is harmful to you, and it is a matter of forgiveness for him. When you backbite him, you'll be taking your hasanat at the Day of Judgment. If you don't mention his name, does that come as back backbiting? Why? You desire to backbite? Sure. You desire to criticize others? Well, that's another point. <laughs> I understand, I understand. When there is no need, brother. When there is no need at all. Okay? Don't mention. When there is no need. Talking about others, whether you mention their name or you don't mention their name, if it's not beneficial and important, not only beneficial, important, then don't do it. Let somebody else do it. But not you. Hadith 163, narrated by Abdullah bin Mas'ud, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما تعدون الرقوب فيكم What do you consider a raqub among you? Then even the companions didn't know the meaning of raqub. Raqub. Some of them said, الذي لا يولد له Yani, Al-Raqub is the one that is competent. He doesn't give children. Then the Prophet said, Laysa dhaka bil-Raqub. As if he's saying, this is not the Raqub I meant. Walakinnahu, the real Raqub, Al-Rajul al-Ladhi lam yuqaddim min waladihi shay'a. The person who did not give, as you say, qurbani, he doesn't, he did not give any of his, he did not lose any of his children for Allah. This is a good hadith for the parents when they know that there is a need for the ummah to be supported by someone for jihad, is to allow him if he said to them, can I do that? Okay? If... If someone, for example, um, uh, in, in any country, for example, in Syria. Now, that's not an invitation to you to go there. They don't need men. They need support, money. Their women need uh, 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 medical help. A lot. Wallahi, a lot. But uh, in case, for example, in Syria itself, someone wants to support the, the, the civilians, because now they are, they are shelling the civilians, as if they are fighting Israel. Ah, we found children, 
kill them. Subhanallah, and they are so proud of it. This nasty, rude regime. They're killing children. They are slaughtering children. In one village, they have killed tens of tens of tens of children. You can see them thrown just like sheep. So if someone wanted to participate in resisting and fighting this uh, uh, kafir regime, and he went to his parents, can I do that? I know he is so beloved to them, but if every son who is beloved to his parents, they will say to him, no, then no one is going to fight. No one. So in this case, if they hear this hadith, they should allow him. Who is al raqub al raqub is the one that did not give any of his children for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to kill them, no. But for example, your son suddenly uh, died, he fell from the balcony or accident, or, alhamdulillah, I have given something. And you'll be rewarded. And this pushes away what we call depression from people. You know, the most factor of depression the most factor of depression is what? Hmm? Depriva deprivation? Depriva deprivation? Huh? Herman. Uh, Herman uh, is one who is deprived from something. That uh, people, you know, those psychologists, psych psych psychiatrists, people, they did not really put that in their account. Why some students at school, they become extremely aggressive and depressed? Because they see the most gorgeous woman. And he doesn't find himself so attractive so that, so that the woman come to him. So he's deprived. That causes him depression. That's why they should not be putting two genders mixed in one, in one school. That is destructive. So anyway, so the Raqub is the one who doesn't give anything of his children. Then he said, What do you consider the strong one among you, the solid one? They said, The one whom people, the man, cannot knock him out. K.O. As you say. قَالَ لَيْسَ بِذَلِكَ It's true in, it, in its meaning, yes, but as if the Prophet saying, I'm, I'm meaning now something else. He said, وَلَكِنَّهُ الَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ عِنْدَ الْغَضَبُ The real strong person is the one who huh, conducts himself when he becomes angry. That is الصريع. The strong, the solid. Hadith number 164, and this is amazing hadith, subhanAllah. Narrated by Jabir. And the Rajul and Atan Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Fakala inna li fulan in fi haiti idka. Maman al haat, yahwan? Huh? Haat? What's the name of haat? Huh? No. What? No, 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 no. Sorry. Uh, ha'at, in the terms of hadith, when you hear the word ha'at, ha'at means garden. Ha'at means garden. Yes, we use it now for this wall, and it, it was used before, but also the word ha'at means garden. So, uh, narrated by Jabir that a man came to the Prophet وسلم, said, <coughs> Um, one of my neighbors, a leaf of a tree was extended, growing until it entered my, what? My territory. وَإِنَّهُ قَدْ آذَانِي وَشَقَّ عَلَيَّ مَكَانُ عِذْقِهِ And he harmed me. And it becomes very burden to me, the, the great branch that grew up from history. 
فَأَرْسَلَ إِلَيْهِ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Then the Prophet called him to come to him. فَقَالَ بِعْنِي عِذْقِكَ الَّذِي فِي حَائِتِ فُلَانِ He said, sell to me, sell to me, I want to buy the branch that grew up from your tree. I want to buy it from you. Give me that branch with its fruits. I'll buy it from you and I'll give you money for that. Then the man said, no. Subhanallah. He said, no. He doesn't want to sell. He's not obliged to make that deal, I mean to, to sell. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فَهَبْهُ لِي Then gift it to me. I accept your gift. But the man said, no. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. What is that? Then the Prophet said to him, فَبِعْنِيهِ بِعِذْقٍ فِي الْجَنَّةِ Okay, sell it to me, and I promise you that I'll ask Allah to compensate you a tree in Jannah. He said, no. <laughs> SubhanAllah, what kind of a man is that? <laughs> but he's Sahabi. Sometimes, SubhanAllah, he's Sahabi. Sometimes people give, and sometimes they don't. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم Now we want to see the reaction of the Prophet after this man said three times no. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم مَا رَأَيْتُ الَّذِي هُوَ أَبْخَلُ مِنْكَ إِلَّا الَّذِي يَبْخَلُ بِالسَّلَامِ I haven't seen anyone ever more stingy than you except the one who is stingy from giving salam to the people. Yani, after hearing this man saying three times no, isn't he stingy or not? Is he stingy or not? Yeah. But still the Prophet wants, subhanAllah, the Prophet is a teacher. The Prophet is a great teacher. Now he's uh, uh, diverting our attention to another subject and that is to be stingy in giving salam. You know some people are so stingy when you pass by he pretend that he's looking at something there <laughs> so he'll not be as if it's burden as if he's paying taxes for saying salam alaikum to his brother. True. I mean, once something really happened with me, someone was going up to the stairs, and I was up, and the stairs was very narrow. So I have to give him, I have to, either he gives me way, or I give him way. So I gave him way, and he went up, and he was facing me. Then he took his way, and he did not even salam alaikum. Then I called him. I said, excuse me, brother. He said, what? I said, I have to say to myself, thank you. I have to say thank you for giving you the way. <laughs> so I have to say thank you for, for me giving you the way. At least yeah, be thankful when people do something. And really, look, there's a good habit here in the UK. If you give way to someone, either he goes like that or like this, or, that's nice. It's a good habit. I like it. But when I go to East London, they don't do it mostly. Little. They get angry. Oh. <laughs> oh, look, I do it for the sake of Allah. But if a person does it for the sake of being nice, cool, awesome, and, and yeah, he, do, he does something good and people don't reward them for that, they'll get angry for that. They're, they will, they'll be angry. <coughs> So the Prophet diverted the attention of this, of the people from this man, and always until our day here now, diverting our attention from someone who is stingy, from giving a leaf of a tree to the one who doesn't give salam. He is more stingy than him. Hadith number 165.
narrated by Abi Hurairah and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala ma amila ibn adama shay'an afdalu min as-salati wa salahi dhat al-bayn wa khuluqin hasan I wish you remember that the son of Adam had never done anything better than performing the prayer reconciling between two persons who are angry who had what Complex. Huh? Gone different ways. Complex. Gone different ways. Complex. What? Conflict. Yeah, separated. They don't talk with one another. Okay. So first salah. Second, reconciling between those two persons. Third, having good morality. What is the reward of good morality? For a for a min. Huh? Next to the Prophet Sallallahu. To be closer to the Prophet. So if, you were, if we were deprived from being, from having the great achievement, the great honor of being with the Prophet in this life, there is a better gathering with the Prophet ﷺ for you. There's a better gathering. Always an endless closeness to the Prophet ﷺ that you should maintain your morality and improve your characters in order to be the closest to the Prophet And what an honor is that? How great is that honor that you are one of those closest to the Prophet because you were striving to improve your character. And by the way, if you have a bad character, number one, it's a test. Number two, you can change. Don't let the devil say to you, no, that's your nature, it's inherited, your father was like that, so you are like him. That's not true. Or I'm North African, you know, we North Africans are very hot-blooded people. No, 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 no. No. Wallahi. If the snake can be processed, trained, if the lion can be trained for the piece of the meat, you can train yourself to improve your character for the peace of place beside the Prophet Muhammad in the Firdaus al-A'la. You should! You should try. Don't let the lion be better than you. The lion is able to be trained. Hadith number 167. 167 عن أبي بكرة عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ما من ذنب أجدر أن يعجر There is no sin that more deserving to be advanced لصاحبه في العقوبة في الدنيا There is no sin that more deserved to be in advanced in life that means for the one who commit a sin مع ما يدخره له في الآخرة besides what Allah is preparing for him that means another punishment الهيرة من البغي وقطيعة الرحم more than the sin of transgression and cutting the relationship of your relatives that means this sin is doubled and advanced. To cut the relationship of your relatives, it is doubled, its punishment is doubled and advanced. One punishment in life and the other punishment in the hereafter. So you have to be careful. And Abdullah ibn Umar qala sami'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa hadith number 169. Yaqul, he said, ما من رجل يتعاظم في نفسه. There is no man that takes himself to be great and great. You know, when we were say 17, 18, I was walking like that on the street. You know, and I and I put in mind, I I uh, I copy in my mind the way that Steve Johnson was walking. You know, the actor, huh? In the movies, we used, we used to be doing this when I was young. We didn't we didn't learn Islam. Subhanallah, wallahi. So I feel myself, and I hit the ground as if I'm, hmm, wait, wait, wait. How, be how beautiful. 
is the advice of the wise Luqman to his son. وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا Don't walk on the land arrogantly. إِنَّكَ لَنْ تَخْرِقَ الْأَرْضِ You're not going to dig the land with your steps. وَلَنْ تَبْلُغَ الْجِبَالَ طُولَا And you will not reach the length of the mountains with the, with the way you walk. You can see it. People, when they walk, they have to take breath, so their breast will be viewed, you know, huge, and go like that, and they have big muscles. They do that. They do that. Be humble. These are the great characters. These are the great hadith that really uh, 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 reforms the characters of the Muslim. Be humble. But let's see what the Prophet said here. مَا مِنْ رَجُلٍ يَتَعَاظَمُ فِي نَفْسِهِ There is no person that seeks or feels that he is greater, 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 greater. وَيَخْتَالُ فِي مِشْيَتِهِ And he walks arrogantly. إِلَّا لَقِيَ اللَّهَ وَهُوَ عَلَيْهِ غَضْبَانِ But he will be meeting Allah at the Day of Judgment while Allah is angry with him. There is only one exceptional case hmm? to inflate your chest and to show your muscles in your walking. Where is that? In the battle of jihad. In the bathroom? <laughs> in the battlefield, yes. Battlefield. One of the companions was seen in, in the war walking like this, then the Prophet said, Allah hates that kind of walking, except in the war. How about saying, when, when you face an enemy, enemy? No, when you face an enemy, in terms of what? I don't know, I heard it. I heard try, try, to be, uh, try to avoid facing, you know, physically. Don't do that. Be like, be like the... The, the other son of Adam. If you walk wait, wait, wait. You know who is this? I wanted to make sure that you're listening to it. Yeah. Especially I'm quoting, I'm going to quote Ayah. Uh, the son of Adam said, I'm, I'm going to kill you. The other son said to him, if you extend your hand to kill me, I will not extend my, ha my hand to kill you. Hmm? I fear Allah. So always try to do that. Don't be negative. Don't be aggressive, okay? Even if someone provoked you. Because here, in this country, you are a person of da'wah. And believe me, and let me tell you that secret. Sometimes brothers are being provoked to imbalance, to imbalance their character. So they will, their da'wah with them will be imbalanced as well. Your enemy doesn't want you only to make mistakes. No, no, no. Your, your enemy also wants to provoke you. So he'll be doing something which will justify for them stopping you from giving da'wah. Did you understand what I mean? This is one of the tactics against da'wah. Thank you. <coughs> Hadith number 170, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, narrated by Abu Darda. Look what makes, look what, what causes the ummah to be united. Look at this hadith. Look at this hadith. There are no two men that loved one another for the sake of Allah in the unseen. But the most beloved one among them, in Allah's perspective, that means to Allah, in Allah's perspective, the most beloved one in Allah's perspective, is the one who loves his brother more for the sake of Allah. And you should declare your love to your brothers. 
you say, for example, my brother, I love you for the sake of Allah. Or you visit your brother for the sake of Allah. But when you, when you visit your brother for the sake of Allah and you entered his house, don't say, bring the cards, let's play cards. This is not a visit for the sake of Allah. <laughs> Oh, let's open the movies. Yalla, yalla, yalla. <laughs> this is not a visit for the sake of Allah. A visit for the sake of Allah. You meet him because you love his characters, good characters. That you remember Allah with him. That you benefit from him a tafsir of ayah or remembrance of hadith or etc. This is the visiting, the visit for the sake of Allah. So subhanAllah. So if two brothers love one another for the sake of Allah, one of them must be more beloved by Allah. Who's that? The one, the one who loves his brother for the sake of Allah more. <coughs> How great is Islam? <coughs> you know these hadith? Now they are, I'm collecting them, alhamdulillah. If a non-Muslim hears these hadith, I believe, inshallah, that he, this will lead him to Islam. Those people must hear these beautiful Beautiful uh, commandments, advices, instructions of the Prophet You see, here is the humanity. Here is the mercy. Here is the kindness. Here are the instructions that cause people to be more united, more humanic, more loving towards one another. Hadith 171, narrated by Anas. That the Prophet ﷺ said, "Ma min abdin ata akhan yazuruhu fillah." There is no servant who visited a brother of him, visiting him for the sake of Allah, illa nada munadin min al sama. But a caller will be calling from heaven, and that tipta. May Allah turn you to be good. Yani, yani improving your nature to be good. Tipta wa taabat lak al jannah. And may the jannah be good for you. Wa illa qal Allah fi malakuti arshi. And but Allah will be saying while he is over his throne. Abdi zarafiya. My servant has visited someone for the sake of mine, for my sake. وَعَلَيَّ قِرَاهِ And it's on me to honor him, to host him. This is a visit. And Allah is the host. This is a visit which will let that brother be a guest to who? To Allah. Allah said, it's on me to host him. فَلَمْ أَرْضَ لَهُ بِقِرًا دُونَ الْجَنَّةِ And I don't accept for him any kind of hosting anything better than Jannah for him. I'm not going to host him anything less than Jannah. That shows the... the isn't this great? Do Buddhist people have instructions like this? Or Hindus? I've seen the ceremonies of the Buddhist, of the Hindus. They're walking, and they shout only, meh, 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 meh. Wallahi, the sheep says the same thing, meh, meh. And they keep hitting themselves and putting, you know, sticks in their uh, screws inside their nose, and, and the knives, you know, they put this, uh, what do you call that? Cheek. Huh? Cheek. In their cheek. They put some, you know, these pins in their cheek, Meh meh, and all people shouting, meh meh, meh meh, meh meh, meh meh. And the sheep say the same thing. What time is it now? What time will be Salat al Al Asha? Oh, we have 15 minutes. Okay, we'll, we'll continue five minutes and then questions and answers, if you don't mind. I mean, where are you going to go for these 15 minutes if, if we stop? You're not going to go home. So you're going to stay here. No. Always. His baghla, al qaswa. His she donkey. Alayhi salatu wassalam. 
وَاَعْتَقَلَ الشَّاتَ فَحَلَبَهَا So he would not be falling in arrogance. The one who allows his servant to eat with him, to ride the donkey in the marketplaces, and to take the sheep and uh, milking it. Three things. Hadith 162. Aisha narrated. كان إذا بلغه عن الرجل شيء لم يقل ما بال فلان. He used to when he when he hear, hears some some news about someone, he doesn't say what is the matter of, for example, Mr. Omar, uh, what is the matter of Muav. He used to be saying, what is the matter of some people saying such and such. Some people, even, that means even when you criticize someone, you don't need, there's no need to mention his name. You know, once I was asking someone about a person, I said to him, do you know this person, so and so? He said, yeah, may Allah forgive him. <laughs> and he, he was about to mention to me everything. He said, wait a minute, I just asked you if you know him or not. I didn't ask you, what is his attitude, what is... People are ready to speak out and to backbite their brothers because shaitan is so close to them. And they did not really comprehend the, Islam, the high standard of Islamic morality. Believe me, avoid backbiting your brother. Avoid it, for it is harmful to you and it is a matter of forgiveness for him. When you backbite him, you'll be taking your hasanat at the Day of Judgment. So if you don't mention his name, does that count as back backbiting? Why? You desire to backbite? Sure. You desire to criticize others? Well, that's another point. <laughs> I understand, I understand. When there is no need, brother. When there is no need at all. Okay? Don't mention. When there is no need. Talking about others, whether you mention their name or you don't mention their name, if it's not beneficial and important, not only beneficial, important, then don't do it. Let somebody else do it. But not you. Hadith 163, narrated by Abdullah bin Mas'ud, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what do you consider a raqub among you? Then even the companions didn't know the meaning of raqub. Raqub. Some of them said, الذي لا يود لا يولد له يعني الرقوب is the one that is competent. He doesn't give children. Then the Prophet said, ليس ذاك بالرقوب. As if he's saying this is not the raqub I meant. وَلَكِنَّهُ The real Raqub الرجل الذي لم يقدم من ولده شيئا The person who did not give, as you say, Qurbani He doesn't, he did not give any of his He did not lose any of his children for Allah This is a good hadith for the parents when they know that there is a need for the ummah to be supported by someone for jihad is to allow him if he said to them can I do that? Okay? If, if someone, for example, um, uh, in, in any country, for example in Syria now that's not an invitation to you to go there they don't need men they need support, money, their women need uh, 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 medical help a lot, wallahi a lot. But uh, in case, for example, in Syria itself, someone wants to support the, the, the civilians because now they are, they are uh, shelling the civ civilians as if they are fighting Israel. Ah, we found children, kill them. Subhanallah, and they are so proud of it. This nasty, rude regime. 
They are killing children. They are slaughtering children. In one village, they have killed tens of tens of tens of children. You can see them thrown just like sheep. So if someone wanted to participate in resisting and fighting this uh, uh, Kafir regime, and he went to his parents, can I do that? I know he is so beloved to them, but if every son who is beloved to his parents, they will say to him, no, then no one is going to fight. No one. So in this case, if they hear this hadith, they should allow him. Who is al raqub al raqub is the one that did not give any of his children for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to kill them, no. But for example, your son suddenly uh, died, he fell from the balcony or accident, or, alhamdulillah, I have given something. And you'll be rewarded. And this pushes away what we call depression from people. You know, the most factor of depression the most factor of depression is what? Hmm? Deprivation? Deprivation? Depriva deprivation? Huh? Uh, uh, Herman. Herman is one who is deprived from something. That uh, people, you know, those psychologists, psych psych psychiatrist people, they did not really put that in their account. Why some students at school, they become extremely aggressive and depressed? Because they see the most gorgeous woman. And he doesn't find himself so attractive so that, so that the woman come to him. So he's deprived. That causes him depression. That's why they should not be putting two genders mixed in one, in one school. That is distractive. So anyway, so the Raqub is the one who doesn't give anything of his children. Then he said, فَمَا تَعُدُّونَ الصُّرَعَةَ فِيكُمْ What do you consider the strong one among you, the solid one? They said, الرَّجُلِ الَّذِي لَا يَصْرَعُهُ الرِّجَالِ The one whom people, the man, cannot knock him out. K.O. As you say. قَالَ لَيْسَ بِذَلِكَ It's true in, it, in its meaning, yes, but as if the Prophet said, I'm, I'm meaning now something else. He said, وَلَكِنَّهُ الَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ عِنْدَ الْغَضَبُ The real strong person is the one who huh, conducts himself when he becomes angry. That is الصَّرِيعَ the strong, the solid. Hadith number 164, and this is amazing hadith, subhanAllah. Narrated by Jabir. And the Rajul and Atan Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, faqala inna li fulanin fi haiti idqa. Ma ma'na al haat, ya khwan? Huh? Haat? What's the name of haat? Huh? No. No, 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 sorry. Ha'at, uh, in the terms of hadith, when you hear the word ha'at, ha'at means garden. Ha'at means garden. Yes, we use it now for this world, and it, it was used before, but also the word ha'at means garden. So, uh, narrated by Jabir that a man came to the Prophet وسلم, said, um, one of my neighbors, a leaf of a tree was extended growing until it entered my, what? My territory. وَإِنَّهُ قَدْ آذَانِي وَشَقَّ عَلَيَّ مَكَانُ عِذْقِهِ And he harmed me. And it becomes very burden to me, the, the great branch that grew up from his tree. فَأَرْسَلَ إِلَيْهِ النَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then the Prophet called him to come to him. 
فَقَالَ بِعْنِي عِذْقِكَ الَّذِي فِي حَائِطِ فُلَانِ He said, sell to me, sell to me, I want to buy the branch that grew up from your tree. I want to buy it from you. Give me that branch with its fruits. I'll buy it from you and I'll give you money for that. Then the man said, no. Subhanallah. He said, no. He doesn't want to sell. He He's not obliged to make that deal, I mean to, to sell. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمُ فَهَبْهُ لِي Then gift it to me. I accept your gift. But the man said, no. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. What is that? Then the Prophet said to him, فَبِعْنِيهِ بِعِذْقٍ فِي الْجَنَّةِ Okay, sell it to me, and I promise you that I'll ask Allah to compensate you a tree in Jannah. He said, no. <laughs> SubhanAllah, what kind of a man is that? But, but he's Sahabi. Sometimes, SubhanAllah, he's Sahabi. Sometimes people give, and sometimes they don't. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمُ Now we want to see the reaction of the Prophet after this man said three times, no! فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ مَا رَأَيْتُ الَّذِي هُوَ أَبْخَلُ مِنْكَ إِلَّا الَّذِي يَبْخَلُ بِالسَّلَامُ I haven't seen anyone ever more stingy than you except the one who is stingy from giving salam to the people. Yani, after hearing this man saying three times no, isn't he stingy or not? Is he stingy or not? Yeah. But still the Prophet wants, subhanAllah, the Prophet is a teacher. The Prophet is a great teacher. Now he's uh, uh, diverting our attention to another subject and that is to be stingy in giving salam. You know some people are so stingy when you pass by he pretend that he's looking at something there <laughs> so he'll not be as if it's burden as if he's paying taxes for saying salam alaikum to his brother. True. I mean, once something really happened with me, someone was going up to the stairs, and I was up, and the stairs was very narrow. So I have to give him, and I have to, either he gives me way, or I give him way. So I gave him way, and he went up, and he was facing me. Then he took his way, and he did not even say, Salaam Alaikum. Then I called him. I said, excuse me, brother. He said, what? I said, I have to say to myself, thank you. I have to say thank you for giving you the way. <laughs> so I have to say thank you for, for me giving you the way. At least yeah, be thankful when people do something. And really, look, there's a good habit here in the UK. If you give way to someone, either he goes like that or like this. Or, that's nice. It's a good habit. I like it. But when I go to East London, they don't do it mostly. Little. I get angry. Oh. <laughs> oh, look, I do it for the sake of Allah. But if a person does it for the sake of being nice, cool, awesome, and, and yeah, he, do, he does something good and people don't reward them for that, they'll get angry for that. They will, they will be angry. <coughs> So the Prophet diverted the attention of this, of the people from this man, and always until our day here now, diverting our attention from someone who is stingy, from giving a leaf of a tree to the one who doesn't give salam. He is more stingy than him. Hadith number 165, narrated by Abi Hurairah, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qala, ma amir ibn Adama, شيئا أفضل من الصلاة 
وصلاح ذات البين وخلق حسن. I wish you remember that. The son of Adam had never done anything better than performing the prayer, reconciling between two persons who are angry, who had what? Huh? Complex. What? Conflict. Yeah, separated. They don't talk with one another. Okay. So first salah. Second, reconciling between those two persons. Third, having good morality. What is the reward of good morality? For a, for a mu'min. Huh? To, to be closer to the Prophet. So if, you were, if we were deprived from being, from having the great achievement, the great honor of being with the Prophet in this life, there is a better gathering with the Prophet ﷺ for you. There's a better gathering. Always an endless closeness to the Prophet ﷺ that you should maintain your morality and improve your characters in order to be the closest to the Prophet ﷺ. And what an honor is that? How great is that honor that you are one of those closest to the Prophet ﷺ because you were striving to improve your character. And by the way, if you have a bad character, number one, it's a test. Number two, you can change. Don't let the devil say to you, no, that's your nature. It's inherited. Your father was like that, so you are like him. That's not true. Or I'm North African. You know, we North Africans are very hot-blooded people. No, 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 no. No. Wallahi. If the snake can be processed, trained, if the lion can be trained for the piece of the meat, you can train yourself to improve your character for the piece of place beside the Prophet Muhammad in the Firdaus al-A'la. You should! You should try. Don't let the lion be better than you. The lion is able to be trained. Hadith number 167. 167. There is no sin that more deserving to be advanced. There is no sin that more deserve to be in advanced in life, that means, for the one who commit a sin. Besides what Allah is prefer preparing for him, that means another punishment of the year. More than the sin of transgression and cutting the relationship of your relatives. That means this sin is doubled and advanced. To cut the relationship of your relatives, it is doubled, its punishment is doubled and advanced. One punishment in life and the other punishment in the hereafter. So you have to be careful. عن عبد الله بن عمر قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حديث نمبر 169 يقول he said ما من رجل يتعاظم في نفسه there is no man that takes himself to be great and great you know when we were say 17, 18 I was walking like that on the street you know and I, and I put in mind I, I, uh, I copy in my mind the way that Steve Johnson was walking, you know, the actor, huh? In the movies, we used, we used to be doing this when I was young. We didn't, we didn't learn Islam. Subhanallah, wallahi. So I feel myself, and I hit the ground as if I'm, hmm, wait, wait, wait. How, be how beautiful is the advice of the wise Luqman to his son. Wala tamshi fil ardi maraha. 
Don't walk on the land arrogantly. You're not going to dig the land with your steps. And you will not reach the length of the mountains with the, with the way you walk. You can see it. People, when they walk, they have to take breath, so their breast will be viewed, you know, huge, and go like that. And they have big muscles. They do that. They do that. Be humble. These are the great characters. These are the great hadith that really uh, 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 reforms the characters of the Muslim. Be humble. But let's see what the Prophet said here. Ma min rajulin fi nafsi. There is no person that seeks or feels that he is greater, 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 greater. Wa yakhtalu fi mishyati. And he walks arrogantly. Illa laqiya Allah wa huwa alayhi ghadban. But he will be meeting Allah at the Day of Judgment while Allah is angry with him. There is only one exceptional case hmm? to inflate your chest and to show your muscles in your walking. Where is that? In the battle of jihad. In the bathroom? <laughs> in the battlefield, yes. Battlefield. One of the companions was seen in, in the war walking like this, then the Prophet said, Allah hates that kind of walking, except in the war. How about saying, when, when you face an enemy, enemy? No, when you face an enemy, in terms of what? I don't know, I heard it. I heard try, try, to be, uh, try to avoid facing, you know, physically. Don't do that. Be like, be like the... The, the other son of Adam. If you were wait, wait, wait. You know who is this? I wanted to make sure that you're listening to me. Yeah. Especially I'm quoting, I'm going to quote Ayah. Uh, the son of Adam said, I'm, I'm going to kill you. The other son said to him, if you extend your hand to kill me, I will not extend my hand, my hand to kill you. Hmm? I fear Allah. So always try to do that. Don't be negative. Don't be aggressive, okay? Even if someone provoked you. Because here, in this country, you are a person of da'wah. And believe me, and let me tell you that secret. Sometimes brothers are being provoked to imbalance, to imbalance their character. So they will, their da'wah with them will be imbalanced as well. Your enemy doesn't want you only to make mistakes. No, no, no. Your, your enemy also wants to provoke you. So he'll be doing something which will justify for them stopping you from giving da'wah. Did you understand what I mean? This is one of the tactics against da'wah. Taib. <coughs> Hadith number 170, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, narrated by Abu Darda. Look what makes, look what, what causes the ummah to be united. Look at this hadith. Look at this hadith. There are no two men that loved one another for the sake of Allah in the unseen. But the most beloved one among them, in Allah's perspective, that means to Allah, in Allah's perspective, the most beloved one in Allah's perspective, is the one who loves his brother more for the sake of Allah. And you should declare your love to your brothers. You say, for example, my brother, I love you for the sake of Allah. Or you visit your brother for the sake of Allah. 
But when you, when you visit your brother for the sake of Allah and you entered his house, don't say, bring the cards, let's play cards. This is not visit for the sake of Allah. <laughs> or let's open the movies. Yalla, yalla, yalla. This is not a visit for the sake of Allah. A visit for the sake of Allah. You meet him because you love his characters, good characters. That you remember Allah with him. That you benefit from him a tafsir of ayah or remembrance of hadith or etc. This is the visiting, the visit for the sake of Allah. So subhanallah. So if two brothers love one another for the sake of Allah, one of them must be more beloved by Allah. Who's that? The one who loves his brother for the sake of Allah more. <coughs> How great is Islam? <coughs> you know these hadith? Now they are, I'm collecting them, alhamdulillah. If a non-Muslim hears these hadith, I believe, inshallah, that he, this will lead him to Islam. Those people must hear these beautiful, beautiful uh, commandments, advices, instructions of the Prophet ﷺ. You see, here is the humanity. Here is the mercy. Here is the kindness. Here are the instructions that cause people to be more united, more humanic, more loving towards one another. Hadith. 171 narrated by Anas that the Prophet ﷺ said, Ma min abdin ata akhan yazuruhu fillah. There is no servant who visited a brother of him, visiting him for the sake of Allah, illa nada munadin min as sama. But a caller will be calling from heaven and that. May Allah turn you to be good. Yani, yani improving your nature to be good. And may the Jannah be good for you. And but Allah will be saying while he is over his throne. Abdi Zarafiya. My servant has visited someone for the sake of mine, for my sake. And it's on me to honor him, to host him. This is a visit. And Allah is the host. This is a visit which will let that brother be a guest to who? To Allah. Allah said, it's on me to host him. فَلَمْ أَرْضَ لَهُ بِقِرًا دُونَ الْجَنَّةِ And I don't accept for him any kind of hosting anything better than Jannah for him. I'm not going to host him anything less than Jannah. That shows the... the isn't this great? Do Buddhist people have instructions like this? Or Hindus? I've seen the ceremonies of the Buddhist, of the Hindus. They're walking and they shout only, meh meh, meh meh. Wallahi, the sheep says the same thing, meh meh. And they keep hitting themselves and putting, you know, sticks in their uh, screws inside their nose and, and the knives, you know, they put this, uh, what do you call that? Cheek. Huh? Cheek. In their cheek. They put some, you know, these pins in their cheek. Meh meh, and all people shouting, meh meh, meh meh, meh meh, meh meh. And the sheep say the same thing. What time is it now? What time will be uh, Salat al Asha? 15 minutes. Oh, we have 15 minutes. Okay, we'll, we'll continue five minutes and then questions and answers, if you don't mind. I mean, where are you going to go for these 15 minutes if, if we stop? You're not going to go home. So you're going to stay here, right? Okay. Um, okay, we will continue until... Uh, uh, we'll stop at 180. So tomorrow we will start at 180, inshallah. 
Let's mention the hadith quickly, inshallah. An Abi Dharrin qala qultu ya Rasulullah ماذا ينجي العبد من النار he said oh Rasulullah what will be saving the servant from fire قال الإيمان بالله he replied believing in Allah قلت يا نبي الله then Abu Dhar said oh نبي الله إن مع الإيمان عمل قال يرضخ مما رزقه الله Yardakh, he spends from what Allah provided him. And give charity, donate. Then Abu Dhar said, Oh Rasulullah, do you see, Ara'ayta in kana faqeeran la yajidu ma yardakhu bih? Do you see, O oh Prophet of Allah, if he was poor and he has nothing to donate? Then the Prophet said, يَأْمُرُ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ He encourages what is good and discourages what it, what is bad. قلت يا رسول الله أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ كَانَ عَيِّيًّا لَا يَسَطِيُّ عَنْ يَأْمُرُ بِالْمَعْرُوفٍ وَلَا يَنْهَا عَنْ مُنْكَرِ Do you see if he was sick or weak and he cannot enjoin what is good and forbid what is bad. قال يصنع لأخرق قال أرأيت إن كان أخرق لا يستطيع أن يصنع شيئا he does something to someone who is disabled from doing he said oh prophet do you see if he if he was himself unable to do for himself anything then the prophet said يعين مغلوبا he supports someone who is defeated قلت أرأيت إن كان ضعيفا لا يستطيع أن يعين مظلوما مغلوبا means someone who is oppressed to support someone who is oppressed then Abu Dhar said do you see if he was weak and he cannot help any oppressed person فقال ما تريد أن تترك في صاحبك من خير then the prophet said you don't want to leave any good character in your friend? Nothing. تمسك الأذى عن الناس As if Abu Mu'adh is asking about someone who cannot do anything, just like that. <laughs> then the Prophet said, You hold yourself, restrain yourself from harming others. Now let's see what, Abu, what Mu'adh has. Because, subhanAllah, and this very, very beautiful character, this very beautiful instruction in Islam, if you don't have anything to benefit others, at least if you are harmful in some ways, this will be sadaqah, as, as the Prophet said it in another hadith. If you hold up yourself from harming others, this will be a charity from you that returns to you. This is a charity from you to you. If you hold your hand from harming others, if you hold yourself from harming others, you know that you are harmful sometimes. If you keep yourself from harming others, say, Oh Allah, I'm holding this as a charity. Then it will be charity from yourself to yourself. فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِذَا فَعَلَ ذَلِكَ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ if he did that, he would enter Jannah. فقال عليه الصلاة والسلام ما من مسلم يفعل خصلة من هؤلاء إلا أخذت بيده حتى تدخله الجنة. There is no Muslim that does one of these characters, but this character, one of these characters, will be taking him by his hand to Jannah. Hadith 173, narrated by uh, uh, Ibn, Ami, uh, in Abi Malik, Ibn Abi Malik, oh sorry, on Ubay, Ubay Ibn Malik, ma'am, on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قال, man adraka walidayhi, aw ahadahuma, 
ثم دخل النار من بعد ذلك فأبعده الله وأسحقه Whoever entered hell, whoever uh, was, uh, uh, yani he was alive, contemporary his parents, and he was alive with his parents, and he entered fire, that means he was not able to enter paradise through pleasing his father and his mother. That's what it means. And may Allah throw him away and keep him distant. You have parents and you did not seek to achieve Jannah, to go to Jannah through your parents. What kind of person you are? Hadith number 174. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fima ibn al من أفضل الأعمال The best kinds of deeds, actions إدخال السرور على المؤمن Entering happiness in the soul, in the heart of your brother believer This is the best kind of work Among the best kinds of works Is to penetrate happiness in the heart of your brother you pay his debt. You do for him some need, something that he needs. You make something to ease one of the difficulties he's facing. Hadith number 179. Whoever had a white hair, shayba, while being Muslim, it will be a, a sort of light for him at the Day of Judgment. Do we need light at the Day of Judgment? Sure. sure. The light is what? Huh? The light is your way to Jannah. Your works today will be converted at the day of judgment, converted to light. Let's suppose you work 20%, your deeds, your good deeds were 20%. That means the light you have is 20%. No, Allah, Allah knows. Will it be enough for you to reach Jannah or not? So you have to increase the light. You have to increase your light at the Day of Judgment so it will become easier and easier for you to reach to Jannah. By what? By doing more good deeds, more good deeds. What is the best deeds we can do? Spread food, feed people, spread peace. Spread peace, Afshu Salam. They say Islam is the religion of terrorism. Look what the Prophet is saying. Spread peace. Maybe you feel terrorism in your heart because the heart that did not make any deal with Allah will be always terrorized heart. Hmm? It's true. Their hearts is, are always terrorized. They will keep having this terrorism in their hearts. Because they did not make the deal with Allah. And I've been wondering, Wallahi, and I think you share with me this feeling. Sometimes if we sin, before we put our head on the pillow, or when we put our head on the pillow, we fear that maybe we'll be having earthquake. That will cause the earth to swallow us. Or the punishment of Allah is coming unto us at any moment. If we commit a sin, the night we spend, <coughs> It's a horrible night. We feel sad. We don't know what Allah will be punishing us. The question is, how 
can those people live and live and live years over years without making the deal with Allah, without feeling the need to make a way and of contact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قال رجل عند ذلك فإن رجالا ينتفون الشيب قال من شاء فلينتف فلينتف نورا. Then one of the men said to the Prophet ﷺ, but among us there are people who, you know, when you look at the, at the mirror, they see, oh, there's a white hair here. Mm. They remove it. Then the Prophet said, whoever wants to remove his light, then let him remove his white hair. That's why until now, alhamdulillah, I don't, I don't uh, change the color of my beard. Because I look weird. <laughs> I don't like to do it. I like to keep it. I feel proud of it because of this hadith. وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين جزاكم الله خيرا One question. Go ahead. You know, you said uh, if, if if one was to go and, for example, in Syria, they were to go to, to, go to mm -hmm. fight, mm -hmm. and Imam said to them, or Dad, he said to them, don't, don't mm -hmm. go to fight, and then mm -hmm. that would mean no one would fight. But because it's why do why do people need? Is you are allowed to disobey them in that manner? Yeah, and it depends. The, the circumstances differ. Now we've been told in Syria that uh, first there's no way to go to Syria, by the way. It's very difficult. There might be some ways of reaching there through Turkey. But you as an English person who doesn't know the Arabic, you don't know who, by, by which hand you're going to be taken, who's going to be, because there is a great deal of deception. There are people now who claim that they belong to the revolutionists and they are the regime themselves. And you'll be trapped. So they say, basically, we don't need men, we need money and support. That's what they need. But if it's wajib, if it becomes wajib, and the scholars, the mufti said it's obligatory, then try to please them, but go. Make them happy. But alaykum salam. I can't, I can't ask the questions because they're waiting for me. Is that right? Yeah, So please forgive tomorrow, inshallah. Jazakumullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tafadda, Shaykh. Tafadda, Hayyakumullah.